out. Welcome to the tutorial for how to use export to RTF uh, to have a nice workflow from creating transcripts, editing them to final export for publication and opening in a word processor. And uh, this is a, a nice workflow, something we've worked on a lot. And uh, you can see in this basic tutorial how to get started with that. And there's a more advanced tutorial with uh, going through a lot of the different options that are available and some of the potential problems that might occur. There's also another a tutorial for exporting to subtitles. But that's only available for the pro users, but that will have also a basic and an advanced tutorial. What you need to do is, uh, if you want to get this, the LEGO demo transcript, and that's just the one we're always using in our tutorials, to export to publication, you can you can just copy and paste, but what will happen if you do that, if you paste that into a Word document, you will lose all the underlining. Also, you, you might get some of the color uh, from the syntax highlighting, but otherwise uh, you will lose the underlining. So if you wish to keep that, you're going to have to use export to RTF. And uh, if you go to the file menu here at the top, export to RTF will open a dialog uh, panel with a, a range of options. And um, this should hopefully smooth the export to be exactly as you require. And over time, we may add more and more features to this. We chose an RTF because it's a it's a legacy but standardized uh, for all uh, most for well pretty much every word processor that you can import RTF and retain a lot of the formatting. So rather than aim for a particular word processor format like DocX for Word, we've decided to go with a, a lighter format that would work with any word processor. Uh, in future, we may have it also for uh, exporting to PDF or to image as well. But you can pretty much do that straight from Word. Uh, yeah. and or to an image you can just take a screenshot of the document in Word. So you get a bunch of these options here and then a preview window here on the right hand side which shows you your transcript and you can scroll up and down if you uh, uh, to see your transcript and then we've just shown you the very basic settings here and that's all we go through quickly uh, uh, because some of these are not available unless you are a Dope Pro user. So for the free edition uh, you have some of these options. Uh, for example, syntax highlighting is set on here, which means that you get the same highlighting as you do in the original. And if I turn that off, then you won't have any highlighting. So you can decide if you want to retain it, but it's, uh, it can make it a little bit prettier, uh, your transcript, and highlight things that might need, like uh, who's the speaker, any overlaps, and any uh, comments. And then line numbering is set as all, but if you don't have the pro version, then you won't see any other choices. All just puts a line number on every single line that's on the transcript. And uh, uh, there, are, there are more options if you are a pro user. Uh, for example, you could say only the first instance of consecutive primary lines, and you'll see the line numbering changes. So, and so if a speaker continues over a number of lines, then you won't see, and there isn't an example here, but uh, uh, that's the basic uh, sets of choices. There's, a, there's also another only primary lines, but not for consecutive primary lines. Uh, and then you can have tab size. So if I can increase, you'll notice the preview shows. And then, of course, it spills over because it's, it's got a, a, a rough limit of about 70 characters uh, for a, a rough page. Uh, so you can change this. And of course, you can change this in, in any word processor as well. Uh, because it's just text, so you can change the, f the, the font size to make it fit. But uh, this should roughly fit, so I'd just say it's 8. Uh, sorry, the tab size. The tab size is the gap here between the, the uh, speaker ID or, or participant ID and then the colon and the tab here. It gives you, this is 8 characters. And then tab, the font size, this is actually making it smaller because the font has changed. That might You might be able to fit things in if you've gone a bit too long on your lines. So you can change it here, but of course you can change this uh, also in your word processor. Uh, and then there are these functions here, uh, f uh, options, which are Jeffersonian specific. And because we're using this uh, sub-tier naming types here to be able to clarify what is a translation, you might not want that in your final transcript. But these options are not available in the free version. So uh, uh, that's a premium feature. And I'll just show you here, and then we'll see what they look like in Word. If I turn this one on here, notice they've all disappeared. 
and everything's nicely formatted. Uh, and then if I also say to give it a little bit of uh, nice styling, then it will give some styling. We lose the color then, but uh, now it's got the styling of highlighting the line, not the translation that's in italic um, and slightly grayed out. Uh, so that, that gives a little bit more definition, but you can turn that off if you wish and just keep it like this. And then you could turn off the color. So there we have a very plain transcript exported with simple line numbering. So uh, how does this look if we have this basic setup here? If I exported this and all it will ask is, well, where do you want to store it? And I've done that already. What I'm going to do now is just uh, open the uh, Word document that's uh, with the basic Jefferson. Um, yeah, this one here. If I just cancel this and then uh, highlight it again, we can compare the two. I have it open in a Word document here. Uh, this was just directly exported, nothing has been done. I've just opened it in Word and this was this uh, transcript exported. And here you can see with the basic settings I've got line numbering every line. I've still got the uh, the uh, um, sub-tier types I mentioned for the translation sub-tiers. Nothing else is formatted. I've, I, I kept the syntax highlighting. So um, you can see that it goes down, keeps on going down for the whole transcript. So that's now exported. Uh, if I had chosen for the Pro version to have a lot more formatting, then uh, it could have looked like, uh, let's see, like this. Uh, and this is uh, with the formatting, the highlighting of uh, translations in italics and a lighter font, bold for the main primary tiers in a neighborhood. And uh, you can see we've got the line numbering now is, is, is only on those uh, heads of the neighborhoods, either a pause or a comment or a speaker, um, uh, uh, except for these ones, which are rather special ones, showing an indication of how long a particular comment lasts. So we don't have a line number on that. And that, you can see as we go down, uh, there we've got the problem there of something spilling over because it was too long. Now, if I just select everything here, and then in Word, if I go to Home and I choose the font and I take it down a little, you can see that's going to work. So I'll take it down and uh, you can see what's happened now. is We're starting to get uh, something appearing that's telling us about uh, 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 um, grammar and spelling. So what you need to do is, uh, and you'll see that in the advanced, is actually using whatever word processor turn off that for this transcript. So there's a way to do that in Word as well as any other word processor. So it does not process this in terms of spelling and grammar. But it did that immediately. I changed the, the uh, font size. So it's saying, you know, some all sorts of problems here because it's treating it as prose. OK, so that's the basics of uh, working with and getting out into a form. And this then, if I just, for the last, just show you what it actually looks like. If I show the marks, you'll see this one actually kept the tab, whereas there is a choice to just put spaces instead. So there are tabs um, as well as uh, uh, spaces to, to format correctly. You know, just these spaces here and here and here to format correctly so that everything lines up nicely. Uh, but there is a tab here, and if you looked in the uh, view for tabs, you'd see there is a tab mark, which you can move about to change the tab yourself in Word. It's nice to do it in Dote first and set it all up exactly as you want, and then it's all ready to go in a Word processor. OK, that's all for now. And uh, please look at the advanced tutorial to see some of the extra options and maybe some, some of the issues or problems that you might encounter with export. And that's all for now.